What up world? My name is Dana Harris and I'm trying to make math cool again. We're still talking about fourth grade mathematics and we're going on to something a little different. In this particular lesson we are going to talk about comparing or actually making equivalent fractions. Now in these fractions we're going to work with a denominator of just 10 and 100. So in fourth grade they talk about taking a fraction that has a denominator of 10 and making an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100 or vice versa going from a denominator of 100 to a denominator of 10. As you can see I have some stuff already prepared behind me so let's get to it real quick. So first thing I want to talk about is let's talk about some place value a little bit and so when we look at place value we have our tens place, our ones place, then we have our decimal, then we have the tenths place with the th and then the hundreds place with uh, the TH as well. Remember, everything on the right side of the decimal has a TH on the end of it. So if it's on the left side, it doesn't have the TH. So that's the difference when you read the words. That's how you can tell the difference of whether it's a decimal or a fraction. But we're going to get to that in a further lesson. So let's say we, just a little point of clarity real quick when we talk about the value of numbers. So as I go to the right, uh, in place value, I'm actually dividing by 10. So if I start here, and when I go from 10s to 1s, I'm actually dividing by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. Okay, so then when I go from 1s to 10s, I'm dividing by 10 again. And then if I go from 10s to 100s, I'm dividing by 10. So as we move over one place value to the right, you're dividing by 10, okay? So, now, would also the converse of that is true. So, if I move to the left one place, so if I go from hundredths to tenths, I'm multiplying by 10. Same thing here, multiplying by 10, and right there, I'm multiplying by 10. So, as we go to the left one unit, we're multiplying by 10. So keep that in mind. That's something very, very important to remember, young folk and old folk too. All right. So let's go ahead and get right into an example. Let's say we have the example. Let's say we have, uh, let me get another color over here. Let's say we have the seven tenths. And as you can see, my mark is dead, so you probably can't see that. So let's go to another color. It's all good. We have solutions for that. So let's say we have seven tenths and we want to make a fraction that is equivalent to that but has a denominator of 100. So if you look over here, notice we have a tens grid. It's, it's a 100 grid, but it's in terms of 10. So each vertical line is going to represent 10. You guys see these in school all the time. So that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So this would represent a 100 grid with tens, okay? So if we want to represent seven tenths, then we're just going to color in. Let's get a different color let's, so you can see this, all right? So we're going to color in seven of these because seven out of ten. So one, two, three, not just three, it's three, four, five, Six, seven. All right, so this represents seven tenths because we have seven of those lines shaded in, okay? Now, we want to figure out how many out of 100 would take up this same amount of space because they're equivalent fractions, right? So let's look at it. So if we notice this has 100 pieces in it, but we want to see how many of these 100 pieces we need to shade in to represent the same amount of value as the 7 out of 10 pieces. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's do the same color. So let's go. So there's 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60, 70 pieces. 
So that means we would have to shade in 70 out of 100 pieces to represent the same value as the 7 tenths. So 7 tenths is equivalent to 70 out of 100. Now let's think about this. We talked about here when we go from one value to another value, we're multiplying by 10. So if you think about this denominator, if they're equivalent, these two fractions are equivalent, I start with a denominator of 10, but then I multiply it by 10 to get 100, okay? So even though I don't have the hundreds place up here, this is, this is, you go from 10 to 100, so we multiply by 10. And remember, when we're doing equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So if I take 7, and if I multiply the 10 by 10, then I must take the 7 and multiply it by 10 to get 70. So 7 tenths is equivalent to 70 hundredths, okay? So we're going to get in a little in the next video to show you exactly how we change that to a decimal and things like that. So equivalent fractions with a denominator of 10 and 100. So, so it's safe to say that if we have another example, um, and, and this one kind of, I left it by itself. This is, so this is equivalent to 70 out of 100. Okay. So those are two equivalent fractions. Now there's several other examples, but I want you to realize that in fourth grade, the kids need to be able to look at it visually. Okay. A lot of things are visual and they work with manipulatives in the fourth grade. So that is equivalent fractions going from a fraction with the denominator of 10 to a denominator of 100. Young Guru's Math Tutoring. I've got the solution to your math problems, ladies and gentlemen. Check me out.